Welcome back. Now we're at the final stage of our NAND gate circuit on the breadboard. We can see that the LED has a has been connected to the breadboard fully. The negative rail of the breadboard connected to the negative pole of the LED. We can see that we've got our resistors in place. Now these are important because I'm using a 9 volt battery supply, which is reduced down to 5 volts. Our little um, power supplier. A little parts of our breakout that I've attached to the breadboard, far easier than sticking wires in. So I've used jumper wires to reduce that down to 5 volts, but it's reduced down even further by the resistors, of course. So the power going to the, the buttons is resisted down, so that we, we reduce the risk of blowing our NAND chip, of course. And then the power out of the, the NAND chip is reduced down so we don't blow our LED. Let's see if this works. Let's turn it on. There we go. We can see the LED's on. Now the LED's on because this is a NAND gate, of course. Um, the NAND gate, both both inputs at the moment are off, and because it's a NAND gate, that means that the output is flipped, so it, it's on. If I switch one of the buttons, no change because the truth table on a NAND gate would say if one of the inputs is off, one of the inputs is on, then the output is off. If I press the other one, same thing. If I press both buttons, according to NAND gate truth table logic, if I switch both of them, yep, so I'll put both of the, the inputs to high, and if I put both of the inputs to high, then the output, the LED, is switched to low, and so therefore it turns off. And if I take my fingers off the buttons, of course, the, the inputs have been set back to low. If the buttons or the inputs are low on a NAND gate, then the output is set to high. Thank you.